Hey there folks, Gary Bradley here from Creative Frontiers and in this video I'm going to show you how you can create sand prints. So down at the bottom in the layers panel I have two layers to create this artwork. Um, pretty much all the edits will be done in the layer called foot which is just the, the imprint itself. You could use any kind of shape you wanted but I've gone for a standard footprint in here and I'm not going to edit the background which is the original sand. I'm going to split this tutorial into two sections. I'm going to show you how you can create the uh, effect of the footprint. And then I'm going to show you some of the things I had to do to get the footprint to look the way that I wanted. So I did start out with an image of a, a footprint, a bare footprint, not a raw bare footprint, a human footprint. And, um, and then when I tried it at first, it didn't give me the effects that I needed. So I needed to soften that up a little bit. So I'll show you that technique afterwards. But in terms of creating our print effect, um, if I move my layers panel here to the side and then I will right click on the layer name in there called foot and then choose to convert that to a smart object so we can protect it. And then I'll go to the edit menu and then choose free transform. And then I'm going to hover my cursor on the outside of the uh, transform box there to get the rotate symbol. I'm going to click and drag and just rotate that a little bit because I don't want to be pointing straight up and to make it look a little bit more interesting. So there an, an angle of just shy of 30 degrees in there. You can see that in the uh, in the options bar up at the top. And if I'm done, then I'll click on the tick to apply that edit. And then what we need to do, and obviously we don't want this to look black in the sand. So we need to fade this out slightly. So in, in actual fact, it's the layer effect I'm going to apply to this that will do most of the work. Um, so from the blend mode menu, I will go down to and choose soft light. So what that will do is it will, of course, remove a lot of that harsh black look to the footprint. And then uh, from here, if I reduce the opacity, it will hide everything in that layer, including the effects for I'm going to apply, which is a bevel and emboss. Now, I don't want that. I just want the pixel content to be faded. So that would be the fill. So if I swipe over that uh, in there and type in, say, 15% as a starting point, um, you can hover over the word fill in there. It's a scrubby slider. So if you click and hold down your mouse and you drag that to the right, to the left, you could just add back in that little bit of the footprint in there afterwards if you want to. But as I'd say, it's probably something that you would do towards the end of this process. So I'm going to set that down quite low again in there, back down to about 15%. Uh, it's barely visible. But um, if I then go back to the foot layer, go down to the FX icon, and then from the list in there, choose bevel and emboss. It will apply the default bevel emboss in there. So if I move this to the side, um, at the top in there, this one is going to need to be an inner bevel. So you've got an outer bevel, uh, inner bevel, lots of options in there. But for this one, it needs to be inner bevel. Uh, technique in there, I want to leave this set to smooth. Um, I don't want a chiseled hard or chiseled soft effect in there. It's just not going to look right. I want to look as natural as possible. So leave that set to smooth you do get a very small basic preview of what that looks like but it's not really until you start changing things like the depth and things like that where it will actually kind of spring to life so uh, in this case i want to make sure that this bevel and boss is not set to a direction of being up raised it needs to be a down surface in there and you start to see there's a little bit showing in there and then if i go to the um, the depth slider um, I can set that one to a depth of in here. I can go quite high. So if I increase that, you can see there. But it, it looks too uniform. So, I mean, depending on the size of your image, you will have to vary these sliders a little bit. You know, if it's a screen size graphic, you might have to find that you don't have to drag these sliders quite so high. If it's a print uh, quality graphic, then you might find that you do have to drag these sliders a little bit towards the far end in there to increase the effect. Um, so I'm going to set that down a little bit further down there it's down to about 100 and let's go for 120 percent for now in there around about 120 percent um and then from here size so the size at the moment is set to seven pixels if i increase the size slider in there then we get now this this way it really comes to life so it looks more now like it's being pressed down in the sand and it really is kind of coming and shaping up and you can again you can see the basic preview in there as well so if i drag the size back in there you can see there is a relationship between the art what you've got and the thumbnail preview in there so uh, for my size i was getting good results around about 80 percent in there so i'll put 80 percent down for that and then 
The next thing I'll do is soften. So obviously this is set to zero at the moment. We've got a hard edge in there, which is probably even easier to spot in the preview in there. But as I drag the soften slider towards the right hand side, you'll see that it will soften that preview and it softens the, the print in there as well, the original artwork, which in my case here, I'm happy with that. You know, this is it's wet sand. I want to get this kind of not perfect footprint, but I do want to get kind of something that's very close to a good footprint impression there in the sand. So um, I'm going to drag that right to the far end. 16 p px for pixels is the maximum there, so I'll soften that nicely. And then really, the shading down at the bottom then is where you can do the finishing touches to this. So you can choose where the light source comes from and where the highlights are. So you've basically got two sections in here. You've got the shadows and the highlights. So as you can see here, we've got a shadow that's being cast in the upper left-hand side of the, of the footprint in here. And then it's catching the highlights on that sort of lower right-hand side in there. Now you can alter this wherever you want. So you've got an angle value in here and an altitude. So the angle, if I just uh, uh, highlight that value in there. If I hold down the cursor key and the keyboard, the up cursor key, and if I increase the angle, you'll see that in terms of angle, it spins around clockwise or anti-clockwise around the dial that's a little bit lower down. If I press down on the keyboard and reduce those figures, I'm just holding down the, the cursor key and the keyboard and reducing those, and you see it spins around now clockwise. So that will spin around in a circular fashion around there, and you can choose where the, the light source comes from in terms of an angle, and then you can choose altitude so altitude really is kind of think of it as like daylight and the sunshine if it's lunchtime then that shadow is going to be right vertical and that would be then right at the top in there so it's a very much a top down uh, lit effect if it was towards say the morning or the end of the day and the sun's low in the sky then you get longer shadows um so you can change the altitude as well so if i increase this value in here it increases the altitude and it makes it look like it's more from above than from a side but that's not what I want in this case. So you can, if you prefer not to mess about with those two values in there, you can just literally just grab the little point and you can drag it around, which is a lot quicker. And you're going to be you know, fairly sensitive with the mouse in there. So I'm going to drag that back around to around about here. I was quite happy with where that uh, shadow was being cast over here at the upper right hand side and the highlights over here. Um, I think for values, I was getting good values around about 110 and then if I go to the altitude value in there and um, for the altitude, sort of about 35 in there like so. So I'll get a nice kind of imprint in there. Um, and then I'll turn it anti -alias. Um So we've got a gloss contour in here. If I click on little arrow to make that pop up, you can click through these and you can see what gives you the best effect, really. It's all about how it starts off with the highlights and the shadows and how they start and how they fade out. So there's no harm in clicking through these and seeing what end result you get. Um, obviously, it has a bearing on the two sliders below for highlights and shadow detail. But to be honest, I was finding these were just too much than what I needed. I mean, this one's not too bad. But to be honest, if I go back to the original one in there, it starts and it finishes. So the little angles inside of here are showing you how that will fall off. Um, so I'm going to stick with the original in there. That's working fine for me. And then you've got the highlight mode and you've got the shadow mode. So do we want intense highlights or do we want softer highlights? And then the same for the shadows. So if I drag, first of all, the opacity slider up in here, you're going to get very bright highlights in there. If I drag it down to the left-hand side, you're going to get very dull highlights. So again, you can customize this. Um, and for this one, I'm going to drag this down to about sort of 50% in here. And then for the shadows, again, I've got a slider down here. I can increase that and decrease it depending on what kind of intensity you want to go for that one as well. So I'm going to set that really quite high. Uh, I'm going to set to sort of 80s to 90s in there. Now, it looks quite intense at the moment, but I do want to change the colours because the highlight at the moment is set to a white and the shadow set to black. So first of all, I want to go for a slightly more sandy touch of colour in the highlights in there rather than just pure white. So I'm going to click in there. Rather than picking a colour from the, from the dialog box, I'm going to hover over, click and hold down and the mouse and just drag and sample a really bright color in there um, that I can from the sand in there. So, yep, I'm fairly happy with that. I've sampled the the, the kind of sand color. If I want to go a little bit uh, brighter, then I can always drag that up towards the upper left hand side of that dialog box for the for the brightness and the saturation. Just pull a little bit of lightness back into that. So I've got a touch of the sandy color in there. Click OK. 
And then I can always, as a, a final step for the highlights, increase that or decrease it. But I just think it helps a little bit with the sandy feel in there for the color. And then finally for the shadows, if I click in the black box in there, I'm going to go for a, a dark as possible. Oh, I had it then and I just dragged off it. If I go for a dark color in here, that I can find uh, around about here. There's a dark color. There we go. So again, I'm sampling from some of the sand in here. But again, then I'll, as a final touch, I'm going to go down darker in there. And make that really dark but i've got a touch of the sandy color in there and then click ok uh, from here then uh, you could always go back to the uh, shadows you could reduce that you could increase it uh, and i think with that i'm fairly happy in here so i've got a, a well-defined footprint effect in there and then um, with all that done then i can go up to the top and then click ok um, if I wanted to reintroduce some of the step in that uh, of the of the footprint in there, you could go back to the fill. You could increase that, and it will darken it down. It will make it look more apparent if you wanted to. Of course, you could set it back to zero and just leave the bevel and emboss to do all the work. To be perfectly honest, so I've made essentially all of the pixel-based content in that layer now uh, invisible. Um, but all that's showing up are the effects. Notice then the difference. If I go to the opacity and drag that down lower. Everything in that layer, including the effect, becomes invisible. But if I drag that back up to 100, whilst the opacity is set to 100, but the fill is set to zero, all of your effects will be visible. But the content, the printable content in that layer that I originally started off with, with a fill of zero in there, is invisible. So it's just the effect that's showing up on screen here. So I, I will increase that again back at somewhere between 15 and 20 in there, just to make it a bit more apparent. And from here, then, with my move tool active from the top of the tools panel, I can click and drag and I can reposition that kind of wherever I want to really. If I feel that I want to just put that step in there, I could do, I could go to my layers panel and just rename that and call that say, um, right foot. And then guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna um, hold down my alt key and alt click and drag and create a duplicate of that to the side, let go of the mouse, let go of the alt key. And then this one, I'm gonna call this one, you've guessed it left foot and then i'll need to go to edit choose free transform and then i'm going to right click on there on the transform box and then choose flip horizontal and it then flips my footprint i can then hover my cursor on the outside to get the rotate symbol click and drag that around to spin it round in there like so and then when i'm happy with that i'll click on the tick at the top click and drag and move that say down here a little bit and it can actually then begin to look a little bit like proper footprints that are following one of the for the left and the right feet in there so that's how you create the effect of a sand impression uh, a sand print uh, inside of photoshop using the bevel and emboss and um, in terms then of how i started out i will then show you that as part two in there so that really is it um, for the sand print now what I will do then is I'm going to show you the file that I started off for this. If I move this layers panel uh, over here and then um, I'm just going to hide the left footprint for now and just keep the right one as visible on screen in here. I'll then go to file and choose open. And from my uh, folder in here, I've got foot.psd. So I started off with a, a scanned foot in here, which is just on a plain white background. And then um, to essentially grab the footprint shape that's always interesting really I'm, I'm not interested in the details it's just the impression of the foot shape um i went to the select menu went down to color range to sample by color and then um, hover my cursor outside the dialog box and click in the background in there to sample all the white and then you can use the fuzzness slider to have less of that selected which wasn't very good and you can drag that slider towards the right hand side and you can increase the areas that are selected in there I went back to the point where I had most of the shape uh, visible in there, little bits sort of eating away in the white in there like so. So I didn't set the fuzziness too high. And then in the end, I clicked on invert to reverse the selection. So when I clicked in the white background, that's the thing that I selected, which was the easiest thing to start off with. Tweak the fuzziness slider to increase or decrease the range of white that I had selected and then invert swaps the selection round. So that when I now click OK, I've got a selection of everything that i need really from there uh, and then i'll go down to the layers panel down here and click and create a brand new layer and then you can notice in the layers panel down here i've got a reset button to reset the default colors to black and white click on that and then hold down the alt key and the backspace key and then fill that region in that new layer with black in there to get a nice solid color 
and then go to select, choose deselect, and then actually dispense with the original artwork in there. So if I drag that down to the bottom and then delete that, I had a transparent background. Here's the thing though. So if you were to take this and put it onto the footprint uh, sand background in there, you'd find it just doesn't quite work so well. And let me show you an example of that. If I go to the window menu and then choose a range and then choose two at vertical, I can split these in here. So if I move my layers panel across to this window, zoom out here ever slightly with my selection tool active here, my move tool, sorry, uh, click and drag the artwork across over here, drop it on there and then move it into position in my layers panel in here. Uh, what I can do is I can duplicate a layer effect. So if I hold down the alt key and alt click and drag and drag that onto the new one in there, I get that effect on my uh, bevel emboss for that one. Again, I'll have to change the blend mode for that as we did before down to soft light and see the difference now. If I set that to say 15%, it's pretty much the same properties, but because the print is a very hard edge in there, you're gonna get probably too well a pronounced footprint in there. So what I had to do was, yeah, it was okay. It was a starting point, but it's not what I was looking for. If you compare it to the original, it's got the soft, soft edges around it in there. I had to do a bit of brush work. So what I'm gonna do in this case, I'm gonna delete that and drag it down to the bottom, delete that one. And then um, in this document, if I click on the tab in here, I um, I called that one base. That was the base print in there. Then go down to the bottom, click on the new layer in there, and then call that one the uh, softening to soften the edge of that in there, like so. And then I literally picked up my brush tool and I painted around the edges so to soften it in there. Um, so if I pick up my brush tool here, go up to the top to the brush tip menu, and then just make sure that I'm using under general brushes in there, a soft round brush. And then I will just harden it ever so slightly in there up to sort of 80, I say ever so slightly, I've just dragged it all the way nearly over to the right hand side. So about 80% in there. Hover my cursor over to see the preview of the size of the brush. I'm happy with that. Press the return key. And then from there, um, leave the opacity set to 100 in there. And then I'm going to just hover over and click and drag. And I filled in these regions in here just to get a solid footprint in there. So I'm going to speed this up. But just to show you that I filled in all these regions. Uh, once I'd done that, then I went through a phase of softening all the edge detail in there. So again, you don't have to, but I then created an, an extra layer in there and then called that um, edges, for example. And then painting only in that layer, I went back to my brush tip menu, set the hardness down to very, very low in there. And then um, start with a, a big, bigger brush in there like so press the return key but this time set the opacity a little bit lower and then soften the edges and then when I'd done that basic softening what I did is I um, went um, to my layers panel I then selected all three of those layers then move them across over to the other document and then from here now dropped into this sound print document, I right clicked on those still selected layers and then converted them into a smart object. I went back to the original with footprint in there, went to file and then went to save as, save that just to the side, just to make sure that that was uh, retrievable, all that hard work in there, click on save. And then I closed that file down because what I could then do is again, do the same thing, hold down the alt key, alt click and drag, apply that same effect set the blending mode to uh, soft light in there, set the value to 15%, something like that. And then go to edit, choose, free transform, just rotate that a little bit, just to match what we've got in there. Press return, move that into a similar kind of uh, position from there. And then um, if I was happy about that, great. I, feel, I felt like really I needed a little bit more softening with that to be perfectly honest. So, what you could do because it's a smart object is you can hover your cursor over the thumbnail for the layer, double left click. It opens it up in a temporary new uh, document. Very confusing. It looks like a separate file. It's not. All we've done is we've opened up that smart object in the Samprints uh, document. And then if I go to uh, window, arrange, and then choose two up vertical, what I can then do is I could then continue to paint on here and soften it up in there. So. If I need to soft, soften this region down here, I could pick up my brush tool, make my brush tool again 
very uh, much larger this time, uh, even larger. And then press the return key once I've made the softness, maximum softness, reduce the opacity down nice and low, and then soften this edge down here like so. And that allowed me to get the control that I was looking for. I've got it in here nice and easy to edit. I'm just looking to soften the sort of the arch of the foot in there. And then what you can do is go to file and then choose save. And you'll see those changes update in the destination file over there. So it's a good way of being able to just tweak the artwork and see it update on screen by virtue of a very handy, again, if I go to file and save that layer, you see then it changes in this one in here. So probably too much in there. I've lost that little ridge where the toes are. Again, you could always go back to this file, click on the tab, edit, undo brush tool. I could keep pressing the command or control and Z on there and just reduce that back. File, choose save, a little bit of back and forth in there until I got the appearance that I was looking for. So that's really what I had to do to get from a basic footprint of, a, of artwork separate from its background and then um, just create a couple of extra layers in there just to paint over and soften that up as well. You could use the blur tool if you wanted to. And you'll be pleased to know that the footprint that I started off with in this file that I made is available to download in the show notes. So is the original sandy background as well. And as always, folks, if you enjoyed the video and found it of value, please give it a thumbs up to help the channel. And you can always subscribe. And if you want to be alerted every time a new video is pushed onto the channel, which is generally every Friday lunchtime, GMT, then click on the alerts button and you'll be notified whenever there is. Until next time, folks, farewell. Farewell.